there's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. On Salvage Hunters. At a magnificent country house in Scotland. That's really beautiful. Alarm bells ring. When the owner is hesitant to sell. What do you think? Do you want to think about it? Uh, yes, please. Right. At a former veterinary college in Edinburgh. Look at that. Drew finds some remnants from its past. But it's a very oh. different object that catches his eye. I really like that. Yes, there's two of them. Is there? There might even be three of them. And at a trade warehouse in Yorkshire, Drew struggles to meet the asking price. I really, really have to get 1750 To see a profit. I mean, I'm asking 3 2 retail. Drew Pritchard is one of Britain's leading decorative salvage dealers. Hello. Wow, that's unbelievable. That's an absolute gem. He scours the country in search of weird and wonderful objects. <laughs> <laughs> I really like that. Look at that statue there. It's over 2,000 years old. No. In his hunt for treasure... No, nope, I'm going to keep those. ...everything has its price. I'll give you £500 for them. Yeah, I'll take that. And there's nothing he won't buy. <laughs> you wouldn't buy that, would you? Just watch, just watch us. With help from his wife, Rebecca... You do what you do, and I'll do the selling here, then. ..and a team of renovators, he transforms thousands of items from junk to gems. So the stone branch we've sold. Yeah, OK. OK, hello, Drew Pritchard. Architectural salvage expert Drew Pritchard is leaving his hard-working team behind in Conwy to follow up on a connection he's just made with an exceptional country house in Scotland. It's a five-hour drive northeast to just over the English border to Duns in Berwickshire. Yeah, today, T, you're in for a treat. Are we? We are going to Manderston to meet Lord Palmer. OK. As in Huntley and Palmer. Biscuits. Really? I yeah. know I'm keen on a biscuit. Yep, you look like it. <laughs> My name is Adrian Palmer, and I'm the fourth Lord Palmer of Reading. And we are on the terrace of one of the most beautiful houses in, in the United Kingdom. It's often referred to as the swan song of the great classical house. It's called Madison. And we've got 109 rooms, at least 100 too many, and 56 acres of immaculate gardens. Manderston House was built by Lord Palmer's great-great-uncle and is worth roughly £250 million today. It was designed in 1903 by leading Scottish architect John Kinross. Lord Palmer inherited Manderston in 1978 and he opened the estate to the public for the first time a year later. I think one of the things that our visitors do appreciate is the fact it's still very much a family home and lived in, and we try not to make it too like um, a museum, but an awful lot of the things in the house um, are reproductions from an earlier age, albeit that, of course, they're now reproductions of 100 years old. God, it's beautiful, isn't it? Hi there. Lord Palmer. Hi, very nice to meet you. Drew. Hello, Drew. Nice to meet you. Hello, I'm T. Hello. Nice to meet you. Well, well, thanks for having us here. I can't say it's not impressive. Well, it's very it, beautiful. It, it is rather unique. Wow. Ah. Oh, my word, look at this. Oh. Wow. That's really beautiful. It feels nice, doesn't it? It's got a good feeling about it. It doesn't feel austere or cold. No, it's pretty grim in the, in, in the <laughs> winter, I can tell you. Do you retreat to one room? <laughs> well, yeah, I slightly li live in what we call the smoking room, yeah. <laughs> no, it's really beautiful. So what... I mean, I've got a rough guess, but what um, period was this built in? What year was this section built in? Uh, this was built in 1903 to 1905. Oh. And 
When the architect, John Kinross, asked my uncle how much he could spend, my dear fellow, it simply doesn't matter. An architect's dream come true. That's, yeah. Wow, look at this. My um, word. When they came to design the ballroom, Kinross said to my great-great-uncle, uh, what, what sort of decor should we have in um, the ballroom? He said, well, I think we'll have my racing colours. And if you look <laughs> up over the door, you will see his racing colours, primrose and white. And they're awfully, awfully fortunate that it wasn't his brother's racing colours, which was sort of chocolate brown. It would look horrible. Yeah, that wouldn't look very good. But what is really incredible is the curtains. They were woven in Paris with gold and silver thread. And they looked as if they were done literally yesterday. Wonderful. What a room. Oh, it's great. It's beautiful. And I, I love this room particularly. Um, the view, and at this time of, oh, time of the year. That's, that's beautiful through there. Look at the colours, amazing. Absolutely staggering. Manderson just blows you away. It's hard to get across just how good everything is. We're not talking about things that, well, that's quite a nice example. You're wandering around going, that's the best one you can buy. There isn't a finer one than that. That's as good as it gets. It just goes on and on and on. And then here you see um, a oh, magnificent my word. silver staircase. It's I've, the only one. I've in... never seen one. Well, you went to one, this is the only one in the world. That's remarkable. It is, it is very, very lovely. Every now and again you see something, it just knocks you off your feet, and that is really, what a piece of work. The, there are only two things, really, um, I don't like about opening the house to the public. Mm. Is one is having to take the stair carpet up in the summer, and secondly is, um, the greasy hand marks, yes. if it's a hot day, <laughs> yeah. uh, on the actual brass rail. Wow. God, that's so good. But look at the big rosette there, that's beautiful. Today has got a lot of firsts in it, and I think the biggest first is I've seen a silver staircase. And I'm not just talking about a staircase that's been painted silver. We're not talking about one that's been nickel-plated to look like silver. We're looking at a, in some areas, solid silver staircase with a bronze handrail. It's the only one in the world. It's the only one in the world. So I believe there's some areas upstairs for us to have a look at. Yes. Is that, um, yeah? We could have a wander up. Is this the attics? Yeah. Okay. If you can be kind of not touched. the I, brass I won't, rail. don't worry. <laughs> <coughs> Silver staircase. Um, this is the original carpet. It's amazing how well it's lasted. It, it really is. No, it's lovely. Just, it's just a, a big family home. Well, okay, let's go up into the attic. Okay. Here we are, coming up to uh, where all the maids slept, etc. Yeah. And you see all these bells here. And one of my grandmother's greatest tricks was to do this. I can see her doing it as it was yesterday. <laughs> that's great. So this, these are, so that's very grand, isn't it? Would that have been for the head butler or something? No, the, no, no, no. Only females slept up here. Oh, OK. Yeah, the butler slept downstairs. We're now in the roof of the building. We're in the servants' quarters, and pretty grand servants' quarters, if I have to say so. This was the ladies' maid room. And then, um... Her actual sleeping quarters uh, were here. Oh, I see. God, it's so untouched, isn't it? Yeah. Incredible. And, you know, quite a grand fireplace. It, for, it um... is. I have never seen servants' quarters with marble-slipped, carved Adamesque fireplaces with ornate wallpaper. Um, it's unbelievable. That's the original paint. Incredible. Absolutely incredible how in touch this place is. Well, you know, the hierarchy of the butler, ladies' maid and cook, mm. they were very, very important people. Mm. Okay, so what's, what's next? Are all these rooms full of bits? I always say the next generation are gonna have a hell of a good good time here finding. Yeah, you're gonna have a hell of a one. Hell of a good um, sale, couldn't you hear? Where's this from? I've seen something similar downstairs in the 
Mein Herz. Ja, I mean, that, that is, ich bin hier all my life. Um, I don't really know. It's been brought up here because the fabric's gone on it. Would this be something you'd, you'd consider selling? Yeah, I think so. Really? OK. What sort of figure do you think you want for it? Any ideas? Oh, I don't know. No? I'd have to uncover it a bit more, to be honest with you, to yeah. give you a proper value. Is that OK? Yeah. Remarkable thing. This is what I think it is. Mm. This French window seat is made of painted mahogany and has a watered silk embroidered cover. It was made in the early 20th century. Once it's been reupholstered and repaired, it could fetch around £1,200. A good looking piece in terrible condition, and it's had some naff repairs underneath. So the whole structure is not so great, but it's a good size, it's original, it's country house fresh, and I can sell it. 18th century would have been worth 4,000. Would it? 19th century, 1,200. Um, 20th century, 400. That's, uh, it, it, it is what it is. So I can't sell it as anything other than that. So that would be where I'm at, really. I think, you know, £400 is probably, you know, what it's worth to me, to, to turn us a profit. What do you think? A salvager Drew Pritchard is at Manderston House in Berwickshire. He's just made an offer of £400 on this early 20th century window seat. But will it be enough to tempt Lord Palmer? What do you think? Do you want to think about it? Um, yes, please. Yeah, OK. Well, let's think about it and let's, let's carry on. Drew, when I move on, what I'm going to miss most of all, really, is the garden, particularly at this time of year. It does look really rather special. Um, oh, okay. And that bank of rhododendrons in a couple of weeks' time will be just completely a carpet of mauve. And, of course, it reflects into the lake. Wow. This is so beautiful. That. We've basically got three gardens. We've got our woodland garden, which is through the trees there. Yeah. Then we've got the terrace, and then we've got the formal parterres. Gorgeous. Yeah, you're going to... Yeah, I'd miss this as well. Wonderful. Next, Lord Palmer takes them down to the basement, to an old storage area. Amazing. This fridge, I think, was made in 1930, and it still actually works. <laughs> Whereas if we think of a modern fridge today, I mean, they don't last ten minutes. They don't. My parents have got a motor-driven one. Uh, there? In, the, in the basement of the house, and it works really, it works beautifully. So, you've got some really nice Minton tiles in that one as well, and that chimney piece. So, and those, they're remarkable, those radiators. Aren't they? Never, I've had thousands of radiators, I've never seen anything like those. So, these are out of the house, obviously, so. Wow. Yes, I don't, I. Wow, no, they, they're they were, they incredible. Were before, before my time. These are amazing. These handmade nickel-plated radiators were custom-built for Manderston House in the early 20th century. They're worth around £600 each. I mean, these are radiators. They're, that's all they do. They're just designed to give out heat, and they are things of utter beauty. And the quality is just mind-blowing. What, what are you, you going to do with them? I don't know. <laughs> I've just never seen the like. Incredible. Well, if you ever want to sell those, give me a call. I didn't make an offer on them because I was literally just doing that. I was like, oh, my God, look at those. Mm, they're lovely. Well, Drew, um, w what do you think of everything you've seen in well, that it is one of the most lovely houses in Great Britain? <laughs> it is. It very much is. Um, there's lots and lots of things I'd like to buy, but they're obviously in the part of the house where nothing much is for sale. So I think it's down to those few items. So we've got the window seat up in the roof, uh, which we went... What did we go on that? 
can't remember. I think it was 450. 450. If we could make that 500, then that would be a definite yes. OK, we'll take that. See, so I'll give that a big tick. Mm. Um, and then we had the... Um, there were some those radiators down there. We didn't even discuss price on those. And they, they will polish up. They will Look polish. Absolutely yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautifully. Yeah. Yeah. No, they are lovely. And I've spoken to our plumber today, and he said, "No, we will never use them never use again." Them. Okay. So they very much would be for sale. Right. So I think, what would I pay for each of those? How does six hundred pounds for the three grab you? Could we do a tiny bit more? Um, yeah, I really like them, so how does 700 for the three? Right. OK, well, I think... Um, I really like them. I think they're a bit different. They're unusual. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, they make a lovely um, flower <laughs> vase or, or whatever, or, or all sorts of things. I, I, I'll, I'll think we'll sell them as radiators, those ones. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, let's have a deal on that. Right. OK, very, much. very nice to... Cheers. Right, should we get loaded up? Sure. Yeah. Actually, no, I'll go and watch you do it. Yeah, that's normal. It'll be fun with the radius. We'll go, we'll go and crack on. My day with Lord Palmer and the house was wonderful, actually. Privileged or what? I get to wander around here and buy things. I bought three radiators today. They're really beautiful, they're exquisite, actually, the pattern and the, the design of them. They're only very small, they're diminutive in size. If you're doing a really swanky bathroom in your London apartment, you're going to want one of those, aren't you? And I think you will pay handsomely for it. Drew was, yeah, I think we had quite a good rapport. Uh, yeah, no, I, I um, yeah, on balance, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I am, I have to admit, fairly exhausted. Done. Right. We're done. Thank Drew, you so much. Very, very nice to have met you. And you, a Hope you've enjoyed it. Um, How could I not? Look at it, it's beautiful. It's always... But thanks again. Thank you. Very, very nice Great to pleasure. have met you, Ed. Cheers, bye. Bye. How's that? That was uh, heavy. <laughs> very heavy. Those radiators looked heavy. Oh, yeah. Oh, glad I didn't lift those. Yeah, yeah. You, you looked glad. Yeah. So, yeah. He was a great guy. Yeah, he was. Yeah. He was a proper, 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 proper full on lord. Yeah. And he let us in his house? <laughs> yeah, towards the end of the day, Lord Palmer, he sort of really warmed up to us, didn't he? I think he did, yeah. And I'm not yeah. sure if he, he didn't know what to expect first. And he thought, oh, that's all right. They're not that bad. Yeah. Yeah, well, They're probably... not as bad as everybody says they He's are. He's probably counting the family silver now. <laughs> Next day, Drew and T continue their stay in Scotland, as there's another location nearby that Drew is keen to visit. It's a short 50-mile drive to Edinburgh. So, Edinburgh. Edinburgh, and it is gorgeous. It's lovely, isn't it? It's beaute achingly beautiful. Edinburgh has been the capital of Scotland since the 15th century. Two of the most famous landmarks are Edinburgh Castle, which sits proudly above the city, and the Victorian Gothic monument on Prince's Street, built in honor of author Sir Walter Scott. Today we're off to see a guy called Marcus Pickering who runs a thing called Summer Hall, which is an old veterinary college that's been turned into an arts center and brewery, and also a gin distillery there. I'll go for the gin, you can have the beer. Oh, I'll have both, if you drive back. <laughs> Uh, my name's Marcus Pickering. I am the managing director of Summer Hall, one of the largest arts venues in uh, Europe. The building used to be owned by um, Edinburgh University. It was the Royal Dick Vet Veterinary School. A lot of the rooms, like the room we're in now, have been left just as they were when the university left. I think what we would like to see from Drew today is we would like to see him find something that we thought had no value, that we thought was useless, um, and for him to turn it into something quite special. Well, there's the, the lovely front entrance. Summer Hall. It's huge. That's a whopper. But uh, tradesman's entrance for us, too, I'm afraid. Uh, so around the back. How's it, but... Cheap seats. <laughs> Close. Ah, Marcus. Yes. 
Drew. Good to meet you, Drew. How are you doing? Good to meet you. Hi, I'm Tim. Hi, Tim. It's me. Well, look, thanks for having us. You're welcome. Uh, well, you know what we're, we're here for. We're here to look through what was left of maybe, I think, the old veterinary school that was That's here. right. That's really what sort of piqued my interest and wanted me to come here. Yeah. But also that you make gin. We do make Which gin. I'm we quite have a distillery around the back. Yes. Of gin. Yeah, right. Want, Follow love, me. Love to see it. First stop is an old anatomy lecture theatre used to teach dissection techniques. Right. So. Oh, wow, look at this. The lectures used to carry out from here, and you, you hung a horse up on this. And uh, oh the horse would be lifted into the, uh, into the air and then swung into the middle of the room and all the students would stand up there and uh, watch as they dissected the horse. Blimey. It's um, a bit gruesome in this. It's quite gruesome. It? But it has to be done. Yeah. It has to no, be done. People got to learn. It was all to help animals rather than uh, yeah. anything else. Exactly. We store a lot of old junk, junk lying around the place. Lighting and bits of tyres and stuff. Yeah, full of rubbish, full of junk. Um, but the light fittings are... They're modern, unfortunately. They're not old ones. Hmm. They're the type that I like, but they're just a bit too new. Yeah. They're the right make, just age-wise a bit new. They're pretty good lights, these, you know? Yeah. If you wanted to use them yourself. Well, that's... we were thinking of reusing them on the stairwell up to um, some offices around the yeah, other side. Yeah, these are all... So these, are, we... these are new. These are, these are less than 20 years old. Oh, right, are they? No, yeah, okay. oh, way less. These are, these are... This is good stuff. It's all okay. right. OK, so we'll Quality. reuse them again, then? Yeah, that's fine. You can use that again, for sure. But there's nothing in there old. It's all new. All reproduction stuff, even the lighting, which is good quality but new. Uh, no use to me. Go on, let's go. Next one. Next one. So is this more older pieces you have here, then? Um, yeah, I mean, if you want old, we've got bones. Yes, I'd like, to, I'd like to see those. OK. Because um, they, they would, would they be horse bones and that type of thing? They're every animal under the sun. Oh, any skulls? Yeah. Yes, I think so. Right, here we are, the, uh, the bone store. Oh, yes, now you're talking. Shoulder bone. Yeah, it could be a collarbone of some sort, yeah. What's that one there? That is, um, uh, it, it's hips, I think. Yeah. Super. God, it's just full, isn't it? Cool. Look at that. That's a fox. There you are, there's a skull. That little dog fox. Old bones, vertebra, skulls, particularly teeth, jaw bones, can look incredibly sculptural. That would still look cool on a wall. No, that I like a lot. That, well, that one was something that I'd quite like the look of, actually, just mounting that. Yeah. And it looks a little bit gruesome, a little bit like a mask, but it's not 100%. And what I'm looking for today has got to be 100%. <laughs> Professor's bone room there. It sounds like a band. Why were these in here? No idea. These are of interest. They're quite, quite smart, aren't they? Yeah, they're all right, aren't they? What that is have you got? S V I. S V I. These white and black enameled letters date back to the 1930s. They would have been lit up and used to advertise a shop or product and could fetch around £100. To me, they're worth 30 quid for the lot, no more than that. But there would have been a lot more if they'd had a lot more, or they spelt a word, but they yeah. don't. OK. Uh... <coughs> do I think about it? We can always come back to them. Yeah. yeah, OK. Let's do that. Ah, OK. So this is known as the histology lab. Histology, right, OK. Yeah. What, what is histology? No idea. No, nor me. That makes. That <laughs> makes I should though. imagine that makes three of us. I, uh, yeah. no, I do. No, I'm just not saying. <laughs> <laughs> just keeping that to yourself. Yeah. These are right up my street. They're nice. What these have got is just a nice sculptural shape to the seat. It fits your backside quite well. These oak work stools date back to the 1930s and would have been used by students every day in the labs. 
Now they could be used in bars and restaurants and would fetch around £80 each. Very funky, nice splayed, tapering leg. I want them all. I want every single one. I've got buyers for these coming out my ears. Would this be something you'd be interested in getting rid of? These, strangely, the owner of Summer Hall um, counts them on a really? daily basis. On a daily basis? Yeah, almost daily basis. He, nice. he loves these, and we do have about 40 of them. Top salvager Drew Pritchard is in Edinburgh at a former veterinary college. OK, so this is known as the histology lab. Histology? He wants to buy a job lot of laboratory work stools. These are right up my street. But there's a hitch. The owner of Summer Hall, um, he loves these. But I can speak to him. Well, See if he wants to... What, what would they be... What would you think they'd be worth? Um, I'll take all of them at £25 each. Right, OK. If he was prepared to sell me... Four, six, ten, or forty, I'd buy as many as I could. Right, OK. I will speak to you. Never know. You OK. Never know. Worth, worth a shout. Got to ask, see what happens. Yes, no, black, white, that's it. I want them. Fingers crossed. Now, this is Summer Hall Distillery, uh, where we make the gin. Oh, this is great looking. Did you build this? Yeah, we did. We built it from scratch. Oh, that smell. Yeah, mm. nice smell of gin. Gorgeous. I pumped the fumes into the room before you came. <laughs> I couldn't work in here. Are you able to work in here and sort of... You, you know, we drink can't... a lot of tea. We drink <laughs> tea as a supplement. My new favourite room is the gin distillery, which smells absolutely heavenly. The gases come down there, yeah. go through that, which if you look inside of it... Oh, does that um, cool? That, that's full of water, yeah. That's a condenser, so it's full of water. And it comes out of the little parrot beak there. In fact, that's... Yeah, remnants of remnants of gin in there. It's been washed out, but um, there's a hint of gin in it. So this is where you'd lie, like that. Just, just come <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's where you lie. Yeah, yeah. you can and move that's back you... <laughs> round to various people. <laughs> Anybody who builds a gin distillery is somebody I want to know. <laughs> cool. Right, let's carry on. Let's see some more. It's a big old site. Off to you. Thank you. A pub, great. Your own pub. Our own pub. Brilliant. I should imagine it's got f a full gin tap in here, is there? There is gin on tap as well as other products, great. of course, available. Yeah. Hey, it looks great. Very cool look to it. Really like it. Love the bones on the wall there. I've seen this too. That's super. You know all those skulls I was looking for? Yeah, all the good ones. They're on the wall. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great. Oh, there's people. That's all full. What should we go through here? Like yeah. the choir stalls you've got there as well. Um, it's a good room in here. What's this one? Oh, that's we great. call it the green room yeah. for uh, want for a better name. Cool. Huh. I really like that. Yes. That's there's it. two of them. Is there? And I don't know where the other one... Or there might even be three of them. And where I don't did you know get where those from? One. Got it from a friend of mine, their, their barber shop. That's correct. Yeah, barber shop, um, African barber shop. That's it. And I think they're great. Pictures like this were originally used in Africa to display the latest hairstyles. This one dates back to the 1950s and could be bought as a quirky item by a modern barber shop or simply as a design piece in a home. It's worth around 500 pounds seen them before, never owned any, always admired them and liked them for their real naive quality that they've got. They are uh, for sale. I can Really? Can you find, find the other one? Yeah. yeah. I don't know where the other one is. No, roughly where it is. Is it in this building? It must be. Somewhere. It must be somewhere. Well, I'd, I'd love to see the other, okay. but yeah, what would you want for them? Uh, I can find out what we want for those. I okay. can find out in, in minutes. Let's do that. Okay. I'd, love to, I'd love to know. All and right. Then, and then hopefully we can have a try of your gin. Yeah. No yeah. problem at all. Sounds, today's a good day. Isn't <laughs> today's, <it? laughs> today's, <very> good <laughs> today's a good day. <laughs> Hi there. How about you? Two massive gins, please. Nice. It's very nice. Hi. Hi, how you doing? Good. What do you think? Excellent. Smooth. Good. Nice. Good. Tasty. Good. 
so early. <laughs> just off the phone to yeah. find out where the other two barbers' uh, shop uh, pictures are. Yeah. So there's three all together. OK. And they're available. What would you like? 150 each. That's going to be too much. Um, 450. Tell you what I can do. I'll do the three, if they're the same size as that one, yes. I'll do 350 end of. Great. Thank you very much. Also, there was the letters. Yeah. Oh, really? They can go? Yeah. Cool. Uh, stools. Stools, mm, probably not. Really? Not, yeah. And none at all? I just think that if you break up the set, it, it's, it's just not as, uh, as good for us. OK, fair enough. Well, you know my bid stands if it ever comes up again. Great. OK. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks very much. Cheers. Enjoy tea. Tonic water. Tonic water. <laughs> you can have a tonic water party. Here we are. Right. Here's the, uh, the other two. I haven't seen They're yet. They're actually from a mobile travelling... Uh, a mobile travelling hairdresser in Africa. OK. OK. Summer Hall today is not what I expected. I've walked away with some shop letters and some African hairstyle paintings. You know, you just can't make it up. That's what I love about this job. It's been very good, yeah. He's found a lot of bits and bobs around the place that we didn't think anyone would have any interest in. So, all good. <laughs> it was very, very good. good. But, no, thanks. Much You're welcome. Thank you thanks very much. much. Cheers. Cheers. Nice Cheers. to meet you. Bye. Cheerio. Bye-bye. That'll do. Cool. Well, there you go. I'm happy with that. Brilliant. And you had some gin. I'll tell you what, that gin was nice. Was it? Oh, yes. But I uh, actually purchased a bottle that's in the back of the van. Oh, nice. Am I having a little tab of that? No. No, that's for me. <laughs> the next day, back home from Scotland. First off the van are the Mangaston purchases. Carl, I need a trolley, mate. OK, come in. A uh, heavy-duty one. Radiator! But. Cool. Ooh. What do you think of that? Nice. Can I give you that car? You know, we've been up to see Lord Palmer. Of the biscuit. Of biscuit fame. We like Lord Palmer. We like Lord Palmer <laughs> Very a lot. Nice. Why? He's a proper gent. He is. <laughs> Look at these. Yeah. And everything in the house was money, no object. And these were made for the house. You can tell, can't you? I just think they're a bit exceptional, to be honest with you. Oh! Yeah, nice. Look at that. Oh, pressure though. relief valve missing from there, yeah. please, Carl. Yeah, get one of those. Uh, pressure test them for us. Yeah. Full polish. Full polish. Full wow. polish. Wow, full polish. Full you, polish. You actually <laughs> let me polish yeah. them. Yeah. Look, at the, look at this. Look at that. <laughs> oh, my giddy look aunt. That. Look at that. Gorgeous. Right, this is from the house as well. <laughs> Well, that's very elegant, isn't it? Yeah. Not me. Not yeah. you, Keith. Oh. Yeah, yeah. oh, I thought you were talking about tea. <laughs> he is very elegant. Um, it Ele is a uh, window seat. Yep. Watered silk, uh, gold embroidery. Mm. Uh, the frame's a little bit iffy. A little bit. Doesn't need much, but it does need tightening up. And it'll go fairly quickly. It's cutie. Yeah, it's cutie. It'll cutie. go very quickly if I sit on it. <laughs> 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 right, let's get rid of this one. Yeah. Straight away, Carl gets to work on the radiators. He uses an industrial sander with fine wire wool to polish them. Oh, they're going to be nice. And the window seat is quickly sent over to Craig, the upholsterer, for repair. We'll start by taking these tacks out now. takes off the old silk cover. We need to remove this. So now we've got that to that stage, we need the top cover. And staples the new material onto the window seat. 
Once the material has been tightened and secured, it's ready for the final step. Right, we're at the stage now where we're going to fit the braid. We've got it all fully upholstered, and we're going to fit a, a scroll gimp braid. So this braid now, which we're gluing on, will run round all the edges where the fabric meets the wood and cover all the staples. Completed, it's off to Alary to photograph for the website. Okay, yeah, that's it. Before long, Drew's off again. This time with his friend and colleague from the antiques trade, Rob Black. It's a three hour drive northeast to Yorkshire, near the ancient market town of Pickering. So, where are we off to today, Drew? Um, we're going to a trade call that I've not been to before, uh, a guy called Luke. Arnold or Luke J. Arnold. He's um, a youngish guy. Um, okay. Dealer is based on an industrial estate. He's got a little unit down there. Okay. And um, sounds promising. So I'm hoping for something a bit different. Well, I'm Luke Arnold and uh, I'm an antique dealer uh, dealing unusual, weird, and wonderful, wacky sort of bits and pieces. It'd be nice for Drew to come and see, see what I've got. I would hope there's a, a good mix, there'll be something here for, for Drew today. Right, this looks like the place. That's the one. Yep, it's a sign there. Luke J. Arnold Antiques ah. and Interiors. Don't you know? Cool. Hello. Now then, Luke. nice to meet you. How are you? Good Fine, to meet thanks. You. Good, Good to meet you. Hi, I'm Hi. Rob. Good to meet you. Rob, brilliant. Thanks for having us. No, it's all right. Much appreciated. God, tidy. Cool. Yes, very tidy. <laughs> well, I mean, it wasn't the, like this a week ago. But, it's the tidiest uh, antique shop in Britain. Yeah, <laughs> nice and tidy. Are we all right to have a look yeah. round? Yeah, just yeah. have a wonder, that's Can fine. Can you give us the tour? Yeah. Um, so, so what got you into doing this, then? I've been doing it since I was a kid, really. So, have you? Yeah, yeah. I like the weird and wonderful and the wacky. I basically, I like... I think I like everything you've got. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good start. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. I like all... Look at that. It's a big sort of coffee bean bed. God, wonderful stuff. God, I, I had the... Where'd you get that from? Did you buy that off me? I did. <laughs> Bought it at the auction. <laughs> Came down and then put two and two thinking, together. I'm just thinking. Hey, I've I wondered, seen that before. I wondered if you'd recognise it. You probably had it 20 years, now I'm going to have it 20 years as well. Thank God you bought it. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. No, it's an incredibly good and astute purchase on your part. I, I really like to be surprised in the business and uh, to meet Luke, who I don't know how old he is, but I'm assuming he's a lot younger than me. Um, and he's one thing which I really like, which he's brave. And he's having a go and he buys what he likes. And whenever you meet a dealer like that, you find good things. Remember. These, are these um... ceramic with tin lids? So, um... A pair of larger ones. Yeah. And then a set of four smaller ones. Ceramic ones. Very nice. Tobacco jars. This set of glazed stoneware tobacco jars with original hand-painted decor and tin lids came from a factory in London in the Victorian era. With very little restoration, they could fetch £1,000. And I've always been lucky with them, and I like them. I like buying them. Um, and I haven't seen that many stoneware ones together for an awful long time. So uh, we're going to have a go at those. How much are they? Um, 250 for the big pair and really 300 quid for the set of four. They've actually stamped up underneath the London maker. So. But, I mean, that's like So we're looking at 450 for the lot? So we're looking at 450 for the lot. So Brilliant. Thank you very much. 
Did I just get my maths right on this? No, you didn't get your maths right at all. Didn't I? No. 250. 250. Yeah. And 300, 550. 550, and I paid 450. And you paid 450. That's all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Clearly done. laughs> <laughs> I ended up getting them all for £450 for the lot. Um, I should have tried a bit harder, I think, but uh, he's a good guy and uh, everybody's got to turn a profit. I want him to make a living out of it so I can come back and buy from him again. Well, there's just good bits everywhere. Look, there's sort of like, see that sort of rusticated mirror there? That's, that's interesting as well. It's got a new plate in it. Which one are we looking at? There's oval. The oval one on the back? Mm. Um, I don't know, really. It's a bit too sharp. It's a bit isn't sharp, it? isn't it? This large English oval gilt wood mirror with unusual rustic design was made in the 1820s. With minor restoration, it could fetch around £3,000. What are we looking at for that one? Two grand. It's cracking over, isn't it? Yeah. I know you're going to make some money. £1,000. Just can't. I know. There you Just go. Just can't. <laughs> I think that's fair, Just isn't can't. it? Just mm. can't. It's got mileage in it, though, hasn't it? It has. Absolute death would be £1,750. Oh, really? Mm. Salvage hunter Drew Pritchard is at Luke Arnold's trade warehouse in Yorkshire. He's just bid £1,000 on this early 19th century oval mirror. But Luke is holding out for a higher offer. If I paid £1,500 for it... Honestly, I, I would can't. have to get £1,750 for it. You really, 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 I really, really, really have to get £1,750 for it. To see a profit. I mean, I'm asking 3-2 retail. What do you think on that mirror? Am I just <clears throat> am I just falling in love with it and going wrong? I can see exactly why you like it. I really like it. I just don't think I can pay seventeen hundred quid for it. No, seventeen hundred and fifty quid. Or am I just being stupid? Am I, you know, am I looking at something that's just really good and I should buy it? Yeah, I'll take it. In the end, I just thought, what am I doing messing about? Don't be so stupid. Just buy it. That's what it's about. It's a cracking item. It's stylish and original, and that's all good. Yeah, so we've mean. got an upstairs. Not really. A back just room. A Where's... There's a bit of a back room. Is that your office? That's my office. That's that's where the, so that's where the good stuff is? No, this is where there's some of the bits. Ah, there always is, isn't there? One thing immediately strikes me as soon as I walk in is lighting. And lighting is something we love to buy. And there's a cracking Georgian lantern of large size. You got all of it? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Do you want to have a look? Yeah. Well, hang on. Hang on. How much is it before we go, go mad? 150. Let's have a look. Shame it's not all like that. Yeah. <laughs> This Georgian hanging lantern, with copper body and lead detailing, would originally have been used as part of a street lamp back in the 18th century. With cleaning and polishing, it could fetch around £800. I'm the best. Do you want to make a profit? I want to make a profit, but not a massive one. 120. 120, sold. Thank you very much. No, you're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, no you saved me a that. job there. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of work left in that. It'd be nice when it's done. Yeah. That'll come up well. So we just strip all the paint off it gently, and that's ready to go. That's ready to go. Cracking item. Coming to North Yorkshire here, we're actually in a pretty, I would say, wealthy area. So Luke's buying in a wealthy area as well. That's good. That means they bought quality in the first place. And the items I've bought from Luke 
all are that. I buy an awful lot of lighting and I like to buy it unrestored. I want to do the work to it so it gets just right. The lantern I bought from Luke will need a fair bit of work, actually, because there's nowhere to hang it either, so we've got to make that attachment to it. Um, but good, original and rare to find with the glass. It's a nice back as well. It is. Untouched. Yeah, it was really good this morning with Drew. Um, managed to sell a few bits. Um, it was great to let Drew in and see what he thought to my place and my stock. But yeah, a real nice guy to deal with. I hope to do some business with him again. Good. Luke, a pleasure. Thank you very much. Really good, good to see you. Very happy great with that. Great to see you. Thanks nice very one. much. Thank Thanks, you. Fella. Good luck. Cheers, thank you. Best purchase of the day, that mirror. Nice thing. Isn't it? Yeah. Just got a really cool look to it. Cool. Well, I'm pleased with that. Can't wait to get it back to the shop and get it photographed. Yeah. Now, I went to see a, a young lad called uh, Luke Arnold. Um, dealer. Literally just opened his warehouse, um, and we got some good things. Oh, we did. Lantern. Top of a lantern. Nope, all of a lantern. Oh wow! You know they always we're always getting off at them. Yes. And they're always missing. You got them, the yep. whole thing. Yep. But there you go, look. Wow. The lantern, spectacular. I just thought he had the crown. I had no idea he had the original uh, bowl underneath. That is really rare. Um, if that was damaged, to have that glass blown, it's, it's prohibitive. You couldn't have um, um, restored it that way. Oh, look at my hair. <laughs> look at mine. <laughs> Looking good. What do you think? A really little bit of rest different, careful it? restoration. Yeah. It wasn't the cheapest mirror in the world, but if something's a bit different, you've got to pay out for it. It was £1,750. I think it's worth 28 to 32. Okay. Yeah. It's really different. It is. The mirror. I mean, spectacular. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Put it straight against the black wall in the photography room. I'm keen to see what it looks like. You okay? Yeah. Look at that. Doesn't that look good? Oh. Happy? Very. Good. Fantastic. All right, cool. Definitely. Cup of tea. Oh, music's my ears. It is.